Okay, in this video, I'm building a Spotify playlisting bot. The idea is that every time I add a track to Spotify, it will automatically tweet the artist to say they've been included. So I'm building this out in Integromat. If you've not used Integromat before, it's a bit like Zapier, but with a bit more flexibility. Um, it bundles various modules together. So for example, I can merge Spotify and Airtable to work together and then to Google Sheets and then to make an HTTP request. But there's loads of apps and things, um, which is really cool. So I've got my Spotify playlist, uh, which is here. And then I have Integromat watch the list. Now what it does, it watches it on intervals at the moment. Um, I'll just show you here. So you can choose when to run it. Um, I'll set it up so it probably checks it like every every day um, for an update. Um, we don't need any more than that, I don't think. Well, maybe even every couple of days. And once it finds the tracks in, like, in my Spotify playlist, it will add them to Airtable. And now Airtable, if you've not used it, is like Google Sheets or Excel, but it acts like a database so you can set up you know, various search queries within the database and have it, have it send the data back. Um, so it's really good. So it adds to the playlists and the tracks to Airtable. And then I ask it to update Airtable again to make them active or inactive. So active once they're added to the playlist. And eventually what I'll do is control it through Airtable. And when I make them um, inactive, it will delete them out of my Spotify playlist. So I won't ever have to go into Spotify apart from to add the initial tracks. So I find the problem is when growing playlists and things like that and growing anything really it's, it's a lot of manual work that goes into it and you spend half your day doing these same actions day in day out where if we just build it once and it does it automatically it cuts out 90 percent of the workload so you think once my spotify list is live all i need to do is add the tracks in spotify and then that's it and then i don't do anything else and then when i want to delete them i go into airtable so after the airtable update what happens is Google Sheets will then update as well. Now, with my certain HTTP request, I can't use Airtable, which is a pain. I'll explain in a minute. Um, so what it does, it clones the artist's name and adds them to a Google Sheet. And then after that, it does an HTTP request. Um, so I'm using an API call for Phantom Buster. Now, if you've not used Phantom Buster before, they've got various sort of hacks and growth hacks. Um, you can do all sorts of things like add LinkedIn requests and, or you can send someone an automatic message on LinkedIn or you can search Twitter. Um, so I'm using their API, which is a little bit more advanced. So all I'm doing here, if it's going to load, come on, there we go. So I've got my URL. I'm posting to Phantom Buster. I've got my login. I've got my request, which is written out in JavaScript, which is copied. So you can see here, it's looking at the Google Sheet URL. It's looking at column name, artist name. The CSV name is artist Twitter. This is the output and the query, which isn't updated. So what happens is Spotify tracks get added. Airtable watch it, they add it to, sorry, Spotify watches it in Integromat, adds it to Airtable, updates Airtable, adds to Google Sheets, makes an API call and a post request, and then it will automatically tweet. So let me run the playlist. So I want to process all tracks. So if I look at the moment in my playlist, um, I've got no tracks here right now. If I go ahead and run this, so we should see some updates. Let's have a look. Here we go. So it's updating on its own. Finished? Yeah, no, nearly finished. 
we're getting there. So this is pulling the data straight from the Spotify playlist. I think, I think we're done. Okay, so I ask it to pull these data from Spotify's API. So we've got the track name, which is the important bit. Artist name, also important. Popularity, I've put this in. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it now. Um, it tells me how popular the track is. I need to find out what these numbers mean. I haven't researched it much. I'm guessing zero is not popular and the higher the number is more popular. Spotify ID, just in case I ever need to look the track up in Spotify's API. So I've got the ID handy. I've got the link for the MP3 preview, which might be useful. Twitter handle, uh, like I said, I haven't populated this yet. Last modified, this is a uh, always good so you can run the database against the last modified date so I can do certain things from when it was last modified so many days for example and then here we go um, it's made everything active so I can go into here and turn it to not active but for now I'm going to leave it as active if we look at my artist Twitter database now this is where it's going slightly wrong um, excuse the mess of this is me testing various things. So what it's doing is looking for, let's say, hierog hieroglyphics or brethren or Dr. Woe, and it's searching Twitter, and then it will bring their Twitter handle back. Now, I don't know if these are correct. I don't think they are. So I need to work out how am I going to get the right Twitter handles back and you know tw tweeting them is easy once I've got a Twitter handle are simple but I need to get the correct one because at the moment if I tweet these guys they're going to think why is this person mailing me um, so I need to do some work on that I think what I might do is slowly start building a database of say drum and bass artists because that's quite simple and then all I have to do is search the database and then just tweet based off that you know we can use that multiple times and just add to it um, as time goes on so that's how it's working right now and i plan to build it out a little bit more um like you see here everything's done so it searched it and then the http requests when it searches for twitter um, the output looks a bit funky if you're not used to sort of this kind of formatting so you can see here, it's got my query string. So it's looking up Phantom Buster. It's looking against my Google Sheet, which is this. It's looking at the Twitter artist name, which I'm inputting. So this column, I'm not sure which one is looking at. I need to check. It's looking at these. And then it's spitting out the results next to it. And yeah, I think that's about it. So I'm going to carry on building. Um, I'll figure it out at some point. And once I've done a little bit more and it's fully functional, I'm going to test it out live and leave it running for a month um, just to see if I can grow a Spotify playlist on autopilot. That's the plan anyway. Let me know what you think about this.